And let's first get you details of the aftermath of Cyclone Tote, particularly in the state of Gujarat. Unfortunately, 13 people have lost their lives due to the cyclone. It's damaged buildings, uprooted trees and also submerged vehicles in affected parts of the state. More than 5,000 villages had power failure due to the cyclone. Several substations were affected. The cyclone also damaged 69,000 electric poles. The storm has also damaged summer crop and horticulture cultivation. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today will be taking stock as he will visit the cyclone hit state. He's going to be landing at Bhavnagar at 11 a.m. The Prime Minister will then proceed for an aerial survey of Una, Diu, Jafrabad and Mahua. Meanwhile, as the cyclone continues to move inland, the national capital Delhi and across NCR, there's an alert as the cyclone moves northwards now. The Met Department has issued an orange coded warning for today in NCR with a forecast of rains and squally winds of 50 to 60 kilometers per hour. It's predicted thunderstorms with rain for Thursday. Orange is for weather conditions that can impact significantly, while yellow, which is the least dangerous of all the weather warnings, indicates the possibility of severe weather. The national capital and NCR received light showers yesterday as well, bringing down the maximum temperature. Remember that Cyclone Tote has already wreaked havoc in five states, including Gujarat and Maharashtra. As I mentioned, the cyclone did leave behind a trail of destruction in Maharashtra as well. And right now, it's a race against time as the search for 74 missing people off the coast of Mumbai continues. The Indian Navy has rescued over 177 on high seas from barge P305, which had 274 people on board. INS Kochi is scheduled to arrive at around 11 today with the people rescued from another barge, the sunk barge at Mumbai's naval dockyard. This as the Navy launched the biggest manhunt after Cyclone Tote set adrift three barges as well as an oil rig in the Arabian Sea. During the search and rescue operations, 137 members of the Gal Constructor, another rig which ran aground north of Mumbai, were also rescued. The search and rescue efforts are in progress off the coast of Gujarat for three vessels, Support Station 3, Great Ship Aditi and Drill Ship Sagar Bhushan. These ships are 15 to 20 nautical miles southeast of the Gujarat coast. INS Talwar is deployed as the on-scene coordinator. Let's also get you all the updates you need to know on the coronavirus crisis and on the treatment protocol as convalescent plasma therapy has been dropped now from the treatment guidelines of the government of India. Why? Because there's little evidence to show that it has actually helped in saving lives. Sneha Murdani breaks down India's treatment protocol now to explain how there's actually very little evidence to show that whichever medicine currently is being used to help manage the infection is actually working effectively. therapy has been dropped from India's treatment protocol. Top scientists say this was much needed. Experts say that this has been doing more harm than helping. By the time antibodies are administered, most patients have gone past the need for additional antibodies. There is also a concern that if plasma is given to someone who is immunosuppressed, that is someone with low immunity. The virus will get a chance to study the antibodies and make adjustments leading to dangerous variants. The Indian Council of Medical Research has cited poor evidence, over-reliance on anecdotal evidence which may be misleading, burdening of the healthcare system, unnecessary panic and unreasonable demands for it as well as the cost of plasma therapy as the main reasons behind the scientific body taking this call. But the government does admit that when it comes to SARS-CoV-2, we have made little progress in finding a treatment. We have made huge research as far as vaccine is concerned, but developing an antiviral drug has not been that rapid and that's because viruses are always difficult 
to treat in terms mm. of developing drugs because like we've seen they tend to change they tend to mutate and therefore you are really chasing, chasing the virus rather than developing strategies fact is this in in india's treatment protocol whichever medicines are used are repurposed drugs these drugs are under investigation and there is little evidence to show that they work effectively therapies based on low certainty of evidence are evermectin which is an antiparasitic drug hydroxychloroquine which is a 100 year old medicine used for malaria and other ailments and inhalational beauty sunite which is to control wheezing and shortness of breath then there are off label medicines like tocilizumab and medicines that have got emergency use authorization like remdesivir what about other medications like blood thinners heparin and steroids the government says restrict the use and only use when the doctor advises when the patient is moderately ill anti inflammatory or immunomodulatory therapy should be considered this involves the use of steroids like dexamethasone heparin should be used only if there is no contraindication hrct chest should be done only if the condition is worsening biomarkers like crp d dimer cbc kft il6 are all to be done if the condition is only worsening the same applies to the patient if he is moved to an icu what do we now know about dexamethasone well this is an inexpensive steroid that's being used in india it modulates the immune response it helps in treating autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis it is also used to treat other inflammatory conditions such as allergies breathing disorders skin conditions among others it was first produced in 1957 and has been in use since 1958 but it can only be used during moderate illness and on doctor's advice the wrong usage is triggering mucomycosis of black fungus now indiscriminate use of steroids as we are seeing of late is leading on to the increase in the blood sugar levels of a lot of individuals this makes very easy for the mucor to go and invade the system the novel corona virus has thrown up challenges like never before like other countries india too is using what it has at its disposal at best to manage the infection in the absence of a definitive treatment for this infection it is not unusual for the treatment protocol to change in fact there is a possibility that the treatment protocol could change even further in days and weeks to come in new delhi sneha mordani for india today Now with more and more black fungus cases being reported the anti fungal drug amphotericin B now seems to be in short supply in different states the drug is out of stock in most pharmacies most states have now floated tenders to procure the injection india too is now ramping up production of the drug but the shortage has only added to the woes of those who are recovering now from coronavirus a dangerous rash a rash that disfigures faces can maim or even kill people india is reporting rising incidence of mucomycosis or black fungus infection among covid patients a consequence of steroids that reduce immunity and increase blood sugar levels in critical coronavirus cases more so in chronic diabetes डायबिटीज जिसको भी है वो अपना कंट्रोल में रखे वो वैसे भी अच्छा है कोविड या नॉन नॉन कोविड तो अगर हम इेशनल यूज ऑफ स्टीरॉयड करते हैं टाइम से पहले देते हैं टाइम से ज्यादा देते हैं फालतू में देते हैं डोज ज्यादा देते हैं तो ये समस्या खड़ी हो सकती है होती है एंड द ड्रग दैट ट्रीट दिस पोटेंशियली फेटल इन्फेक्शन हैज फ्लोन ऑफ द शेल्स The injection is out of stock in various medical stores across Uttar Pradesh. No active data of black fungus is available from the state. 
but pharmacies are reporting a spike in demand for the drug. अब दवा एक ऐसी चीज है कि ये दवा की इतनी सैली नहीं थी उससे हंड्रेड टाइम इसकी सेल एकदम से बढ़ी तो अब कंपनियों से रिक्वेस्ट की गई कि इसको जल्दी से जल्दी In the meantime, the state government has formed a 12-member team to deal with the black fungus challenge and normalize drug supplies. This man in Madhya Pradesh has been looking for the anti-fungal injection for his mother since May 13, but without success. मुझे डॉक्टर ने बोला है कि आपको कम से कम 20 से 30 इंजेक्शन लगेंगे और इंजेक्शन की कीमत भी 8000 हजार रुपये है कोई कम कीमत नहीं है तो उसको ढूंढते ढूंढते साहब मैं तो परेशान हो गया हूँ अब उसकी कोई समझ में नहीं आ रहा कि क्या करें मिल ही नहीं रहा है पूरे भोपाल में ढूंढ लिया इंदौर में तक पता कर लिया ग्वालियर में पता कर लिया पर कोई अवेबिलिटी के बारे में कोई जानकारी ही नहीं मिल रही है इसकी Faced with shortages, the state government has sought 24,000 doses from the center and sourced 2,000 from the drug makers. In India, Bharat Serums and Vaccine, Walkhard, Abbott Healthcare, United Biotech, and Sipla are the major manufacturers of amphotericin B, which costs between 4,500 and 12,000 per injection. The center has supplied one lakh vials to states to jack up supplies. Imports are also being explored. Maharashtra has floated tenders for one lakh injections, and Gujarat is reaching out to private companies to meet demands. Honorable Prime Minister ने देश के उन डॉक्टरों से जो कि लिमिट जो कि इंटीरियर एरियाज में रूरल एरियाज में और टू टीयर और थ्री टीयर टाउन्स में काम कर रहे हैं बोथ कोविड और नॉन कोविड सर्विसेज प्रोवाइड कर रहे हैं उनसे भी इंट्रैक्शन किया उनसे रिक्वेस्ट भी की है कि मूकर माइकोसिस जो कि एक नई समस्या के रूप में उभर कर आ रहा है उसके बारे में अवेयरनेस स्प्रेड करें पर्टिकुलरली टू टीयर एंड टू थ्री टीयर टाउन्स में भी फनाव दो शॉर्टेजेस परसिस्ट इवन इन द नेशनल कैपिटल We are looking for a reality check at the RML Hospital Medicine Shop. That are these medicines available or not? We are talking to a few uh, of the medicine shop owner. आपके पास क्या है amphotericin B का क्या situation? एक ही shop है सिंगल है. नहीं है. सर बताएं आपको एक हफ्ते से नहीं आ रहा. So what they are telling that uh, uh, these medicines which are In fact, antifungal medicines and are very important in the context of the black fungal disease. These medicines are now out of stock. The financial capital in Maharashtra is also impacted by black fungus and shortfalls of amphotericin B. Medical care suppliers, who are, they have companies who have not had so much demand before, so there was no manufacturing. Now, this injection has all of a sudden. लगभग लगभग सभी हॉस्पिटल्स में आईसीयू हॉस्पिटल्स में इसका डिमांड है और उनके रिक्वायरमेंट डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स को आ रहे हैं जिसके हिसाब से पहले मैन्युफैक्चरिंग है नहीं इसके लिए अभी वो गुड्स मार्केट में शॉर्ट हो गया है एन इन्फेक्शन दैट इज एडेड टू द वोज ऑफ रिकवरिंग कोरोना वायरस पेशेंट्स When asked, the top experts of the government have said that they don't have a full-scale data on the number of cases of black fungus being reported in the country. But they did say that it's not an outbreak yet, although the number of cases are large. But states have already pressed the panic button to say that there's a shortage of the drug that treats black fungus, which is also leading to mortality in many cases across the country. Milan Sharma for India today. Some worrying news this morning. The Singapore government has announced that the new mutant strain of the COVID-19 virus is called scientifically the B1617 strain. It's affecting children more. Singapore is now called for shutting of all schools and educational institutions till May 28th. Singapore confirmed 38 locally transmitted coronavirus cases after months of near zero cases. Meanwhile, in India, the health ministry is constantly monitoring this new strain. The government is also preparing to deal with the Singapore mutant strain by training pediatrics on treatment protocol and conducting multiple webinars on the same. There's also, however, some hope. Double vaccinated Americans are shedding the mask after over one and a half years since the coronavirus outbreak. U.S. President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris appeared without masks. Some Americans, however, are still skeptical of the new guidelines.
the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the CDC announced that they are no longer recommending that fully vaccinated people need wear masks. This recommendation holds true whether you are inside or outside. I think it's a great milestone, a great day. It's been made possible by the extraordinary success we've had in vaccinating so many Americans so quickly. And with that, America has gone mask-free. Over one and a half years after the COVID-19 outbreak. It means that we're getting back in track, that everything is going back to normal. It, it feels good to finally be over with this coronavirus thing that took a lot of people's life away. And I feel good. I'm happy. I would say that a lot of times I put on masks outside to make other people more comfortable, um, even though I felt like it wasn't a risk if I was just passing by somebody. Whereas once the policy issued, I felt that I was more in the right in not doing that. So I, um, I would say I do that less now, knowing that the policy is effect. But for some, old habits die hard. Like a year ago, it was uncomfortable to wear a mask, and now it's become habit. It's become uncomfortable to not wear a mask. So I want to break myself of that habit and just project an image of normality. America's Center for Disease Control hopes that things may go back to pre-COVID times by as early as July. All of us are getting fully vaccinated and continuing our prevention efforts can help us turn the corner on the pandemic as early as July and set us forward on a path toward a more normal lifestyle. Well then, how soon can India say goodbye to the mask? At the current rate of vaccination, not so fast, say health experts. Please do not compare the two countries, do not compare the load of cases of the two countries and the population of this country. We cannot unmask at all as far as we are concerned. Our stand remains double masking when you are in the crowds. With a much more virulent mutation of the virus and a much slower pace of vaccination in India, doctors say that despite whatever is happening in other countries, India cannot afford to relax its mask, social distancing and hand hygiene protocols just yet. In New Delhi, with cameraman Nasir Khan, this is Anisha Mathur for India Today. Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan is all geared up for a grand swearing-in ceremony tomorrow. There was a big question mark, a lot of suspense over his cabinet. And yes, it's all new faces, as the LDF said that they will not be giving a second term to the ministers from Pinarayi Vijayan's first cabinet. And that means the hugely popular KK Shailaja is not going to be getting a second term as health minister. From Nipah virus to COVID-19. Kerala has been hailed by the world for its handling of health sector. And much of the credit goes to KK Shelja, also known as Shelja Teacher. The health minister of the state who hit the global headlines, the familiar reassuring face of Shelja will be missing when Pinarayi Vijayan and his new team takes oath on Thursday. Vijayan, who won a historic re-election, on the plank of his government's handling of COVID and welfare measures, dropped the entire cabinet, opting for an overhaul. Shelja, who won the biggest margin in the Kerala elections, says she has no grudge. It is a policy decision that uh, no one should uh, continue uh, to the next cabinet. And we all the ministers were not there. Uh, and it is a very good decision and uh, it's a chance for the fresh comers and uh, they are coming. And I appreciate it and I welcome the newcomers. Her exclusion from the cabinet drew sharp reactions on social media. Even from the rivals like Congress MP Shashi Tharoor. In the new regime, Shelja will be the party whip, pretty much an insignificant post. Political pundits are now drawing comparison between Shelja and K.R. Gauri, who recently passed away. Gauri had incidentally been denied the CM post by the CPM years ago. But unlike Gauri, Shelja is unlikely to raise any murmur over her exclusion. 
Bureau Report, India Today. With that, we're slipping into a short...